Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're doing some canning today. I had just opened up a new package of quart jars, so I wanted to go through them and check the lids and make sure I had no dents or imperfections. Because when you get a new pack, sometimes that is the case. So you want to make sure that you are always checking your new packs of jars and the lids. Because as you can see, you can get a pretty significant dent that is going to hurt your seal later on. So now I'm getting two new ones out of a new pack. Putting those aside, we're going to get all the jars into the sink and get them washed up with some hot soapy water. Here I am opening up a new sponge to clean these so that everything is fresh, new, and clean. At this point, my daughter had pulled up a chair and decided she wanted to try and help me. So she started to move the camera around a little bit. So I hope you don't mind the, the jottiness of the image. But, you know, it's real life. And my daughter loves to help me with dishes, cooking, cleaning, and even canning. Now I'm sticking my jars into my microwave to sterilize them a bit. Getting all of my canner items ready to get them all washed up. I do wash my canner after I am done with my canning session, but I always like to start with everything fresh and clean and sterilized and ready to go. Making sure everything is clean and sterilized is important. It helps decrease your chances of getting a botulism outbreak in your cans. That is why I decided to take you along with me on how I prep and get ready to can. And that includes a lot of cleaning. You want to make sure that everything is sanitize and sterilize. That's why I'm doing my countertops right now. I make sure to do it with Lysol, make sure to kill any germs that might be sitting on my countertops. Fresh clean towels to lay everything out on. And here I'm actually oiling up my seal ring for my lid with some oil because I had just cleaned it. Getting my pressure gauge put back on. A lot does go into canning and it can be time consuming, but it is very worth it. The end result is so rewarding. And now I'm going to get my tools out that I got from Menards and I'm going to get those all washed up so that we can have everything sanitized and ready to go. Once all that is washed, I do like to go back over it with some vinegar. So you'll see me laying these out on the table and I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe everything down with some vinegar real quick. I am also working on sterilizing my jars in my microwave for 60 seconds just for precautionary. I'm getting a pot out and I'm putting my rings and my lids in and I'm going to boil those on a light boil for about 10 minutes. And then we did get 10 pounds of meat browning up on the stove and we'll show you that next. So when you're cooking the meat you want to make sure that you're mixing it regularly. You just want to get the pink out of the meat. While the beef is cooking, I'm going to make a beef broth that will go in the jars and it will give it some extra flavor. So while the beef is cooking and the beef broth is cooking, we're going to get our canner ready. This is going to take three quarts of water. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in the canner, but it is hitting the notch that is right there. And that is what signals that it has three quarts of water and it's good to pressure can. There are other notches here that you can see. And these are for when uh, you're water bath canning because with my Presto canner, I can both pressure can and water bath can. Now we're gonna put our vinegar into the canner. You're going to want to put two tablespoons of vinegar into the canner for the processing. Okay, on this first batch, we have gotten all the pink out of the meat. We're going to go ahead and strain this and start on the second batch. Now I'm just using a strainer and a metal tin. I'm going to go ahead and just pour the meat into the strainer.
And now again, because you are using a lower fat content of ground beef, you're not going to have that much grease. I recommend using a 90-10 when you are canning ground beef. Now with new guidelines, it isn't necessary to sanitize your jars if your processing time is going to be over 10 minutes. Um, however, there are three different ways to process, uh, to sanitize your jars. You can either put them in the microwave after you have cleaned them and they still have some water in them. You do that for one minute. Another way is in the oven at 275 for 20 minutes. And then the other way is to completely submerge them into your canner prior to canning and boil them for 10 minutes. Now that's if you decide to sterilize your jars. Otherwise, according to new USDA guidelines, if the processing time is over 10 minutes, go ahead and just start canning everything up. So I'm gonna start with the ground beef. I already sanitized all my utensils. Now I use quart jars for all of my meat that I can because in my family we make larger meals, we like leftovers. So we always make sure to have the larger quarts of meat. A lot of people use the wide mouth. I did not purchase any wide mouth. It makes it a little easier to get the meat into the jar. And I browned up about 13 pounds total of ground beef. So I'm just using my little bubble tool, pack the meat down a little bit more. So you can make sure you get, generally there would be about a little over two pounds in each jar. Now I'm gonna fill all my jars while my lids and rings sanitize over there. And with meat, you don't want to fill it to the brim with most things that you process in your canning jars. You want one inch of headspace, which generally speaking, when I do that, I just put it right below the rings. So now I'm going to add my liquid. And it's okay if it goes a little bit over because once you get your bubble tool out and start getting the bubbles out, it'll work its way down. So you want to go along the edges. And get all the bubbles out of your jars. Add a little more juice.
gonna put some hot water in a little bowl. We're gonna add some vinegar into it. This is gonna help break down the grease on the rims of jars. I'm gonna take a paper towel. You're gonna wet the paper towel with the water and vinegar. And you're gonna clean up all of your ring or all of your jar lids, jar rims. You want to make sure to get all the grease off of your rims of your jars. And then while we do the lids and the rings, we're going to go ahead and get our canner warmed up because we are putting hot meat into jars with hot liquid. So we want to make sure that our canner also has hot water in it. So I'm going to get my little magnet. Now all these tools I bought in a kit that I got from Menards, I believe it was, like $9 for the whole thing. So then when you get your lids out, you want to make sure you do not touch the inside here. And that's why the magnet is so wonderful because you just get it, flop it right on top, grab a ring, get it on there. And then you just want to tighten this finger tight, no more than finger tight. If you tighten it too much, you're risking your uh, seal. Okay, so we have all our, our lids and our rings on. They're all finger tight. Okay, so prepping your canner, you're getting it nice and hot. The water needs to be hot for your jars to go in. Make sure you have your little metal thing sitting on the bottom. Let's see if I have my other one over here. Show you what it looks like. So this is what you need to do. Make sure the bumps are sitting on the bottom. And I greased up my ring already. So you want to make sure your ring is seated properly in the lid. Your pressure gauge is nice and tight. Your lock is popping up and down. And then the important thing is to look at your vent here. You want to hold it up to the light and make sure you can see through. If you're blocking any of it, you just want to give it a nice blow. So now the canner's ready to have the jars put in and we'll start to uh, get it heated up and venting. Now my canner's a 23 quart. It does fit seven quart jars on one level and it can fit up to 20 pint jars doubled up. Now I'm able to use the larger canner because I have a gas stove with the iron tops. Electric stoves with a glass top, you wanna stick to getting a 16 quart canner to avoid risking breaking your uh, stove top.
have our seven jars in there. We have our three quarts of water in the can with two tablespoons of vinegar. So we are gonna start getting this up to temperature. So we're gonna get our lid on our canner. And as you can see, there is an arrow here and you're gonna wanna line it up with your arrow on your canner. Like that. And then you're gonna bring it and you're gonna lock it. And now we're gonna bring the temperature up on the canner and we're gonna watch as the steam starts coming out of your vent. And once we have a nice strong stream of steam, we're gonna let it do that for 10 minutes. canner lock has come up. We have a nice strong and steady stream of steam going. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes. Once the timer is done, we're going to take our nice weight here. We're going to stick it on there and bring it up to pressure. For my elevation, we bring the pressure up to 10 pounds. I bring it up to 11 and let it sit there and slowly bring the temperature down as this canner is bringing itself up to pressure. So we'll be back when the timer is done. Our timer is done. It is time to put our weight on the canner and start building pressure. We're going to watch our meter as we rise up. I currently have this set on high. And when it gets to about five pounds of pressure, I'm going to start knocking down the temperature. Okay, we are at five pounds of pressure right now. So I'm going to knock my temperature down on my stove to about a seven. And I'll continually do that as the pressure builds because it's not a race. You don't wanna leave it on high and let it get up to being too high of pressure and then you gotta work it back and you risk it dropping below 10 pounds of pressure, which once that happens, you have to start the whole process over again. So you want to make sure that you get there slow and steady and maintain a nice pressure. I like to stay at 11 just to be safe. If it goes to 12 in the 13 range, we're still okay, but I do like to try to bring it back uh, throughout the time when we're doing this. Now, because these are quart jars of meat, we are going to do this for 90 minutes. Quartz process at 90 minutes. Pints would process at 75 minutes if you're doing just a pint. So as you see, it's going up a little slower. And when it gets to about eight pounds of pressure, I'm gonna knock it back again. Okay, we are hitting eight pounds of pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring my temperature down to about a five, maybe a little higher than five. And we're gonna sit and watch as it comes up to 11. And once it comes to 11, I'm probably going to knock it down to about four and a half, three. Um, knowing my stove three is about where I can keep it at a, a good pressure throughout the 90 minutes. Again, where we're at, the pressure is 10 pounds from our elevation. You would want to check your local elevation and your manual and see what pressure you would have to keep your canner at. And you can also have your pressure gauge tested. Um, you can send it into the manufacturer of your canner just to make sure that your pressure gauge is correct. Or you can look up a local 
facility that's going to do that for you. And we are hitting 10 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go to about 11 and then I'm gonna knock it down on the temperature again. And watch as it maintains. Now there are a number of canners that you can get. This is the Presto canner. The All-American is a pretty popular one and it has all the twisties that hold the, the uh, lid down. And it's pretty expensive, but it, it is a favorite of many canners. And then of course there are canners that do not have the pressure gauge and it just has a pounds uh, meter that you would put on. And with those, once you get to pressure, you'll get a nice little jiggle, 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 jiggle when you are at the proper um, pressure. And if you have one of those canners and you're getting the jiggle, jiggle, you are good. However, if you're getting jiggle, 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 it's time to bring back your temperature. Okay, so we are at 11 pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knock my temperature down to about a four and a half. And we're gonna let it sit there. I'm also gonna start my timer now for 90 minutes. And we're gonna let these process. The one good thing about canning is anything that you can has a shelf life of up to five years. On my shelves, I have spaghetti sauce, I have soups, I have fruits, I have also some butter, and I'll also be doing ghee at some point. It's just that I didn't take my butter to that level with the ghee. And I have a lot of chicken and beef on my uh, shelves. Having protein is very important. During our 90 minutes, I decided to separate and vacuum seal 20 pounds of ground beef that I had that needed to go into the deep freezer. So here I have 20 pounds worth of beef that I vacuum seal while I'm canning, getting things done. Each of these has about two, a little over two pounds in it. Like uh, Just like with the canning, we make bigger meals, so we need more meat in our meals. So these are gonna go into the deep freezer. Our 90 minutes of processing time is done. We're gonna turn the timer off. We're gonna turn the heat off on the stove and we're gonna let this cool down. I will open up the canner when the lock comes down and that signifies that there is no pressure built up in the can. It's been about 30 minutes. The lock on the canner has gone down. We're gonna take the weight off. There is no pressure left in the can. And I'm going to put you down while I take the lid off. We're going to twist it back to the arrows meeting. And when you take your lid off, you always want to face it away from you so that the steam goes away from your face. Here is our canned ground beef. So we're gonna take these cans out and we're gonna let them, look at all that boiling goodness. We're gonna let them come over here. Never put them directly onto your countertop. You always wanna have something under them. Did have a little bit of siphoning, which usually does happen with a greasier meat. I 
We've got seven quarts total of ground beef. Again, with these, you can make so many meals. You can make sloppy joes, you can make tacos, shepherd's pie, tater tot casserole, pretty much any casserole that calls for ground beef in it. So you're gonna leave the rings on these for 12 to 24 hours. You wanna check all of your cans to make sure that they seal within 24 hours. And these will start making beautiful music here. Hey baby, hold on. All right, these guys are starting to ping. So that means we are getting a seal. It is the next day. It's been about 13 hours since we finished our canning session. We're going to go ahead and take the rings off and check and see how our seals are doing. Now, when you check your seals, you want to make sure you're lifting the can up off the, the counter to make sure that it is sticking. And then after I am done, I'm going to go ahead and wipe everything down with a hot rag with vinegar and get all the extra excess grease off of the jars. And it looks like we did pretty good this session. It looks like we have a 100% success rate on these jars. So that's seven jars. Seven meals worth of ground beef that would last up to five years on my shelf. No need for a freezer, pop the can open, you can cook it for the recommended 10 minutes, or you can just go ahead and eat it. I want to thank you for tuning in and canning with me. I hope that this video was really helpful. Please subscribe, like, and share if you like this video and if you'd like more of them. And I'll see you on the next video.